Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today we're working on a fully responsive image slider that you can navigate here with the arrows or with the keyboard or hitting spacebar by focusing on those. And then when you get to the end and you click, it just keeps on going. You may even notice there's a little progress bar here that follows you along. You can go back the other way and it works just the same. Like I said, it is fully responsive. And in fact, whenever you resize the screen, it kind of ensures that it's got everything exactly where it needs to be. So let's say you've, you're come over here and you're like on an iPhone 5 and then you switch it over. It'll actually re kind of calculate. And at the very most, it'll be 100 view height here. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. And we have noticed there's a little question mark in the bottom here. That's because this is actually live. It's in my projects folder here. It's called image slider. If you come over here and click, you'll get access to the code or to the YouTube playlist that you're already watching. So probably not helpful for you, but if you need to come back, you can find it that way. Uh, I'll also leave links to the code in the description. This is though just part one that goes over the HTML and the CSS. All right, let's jump right in. We're gonna use Vite here. I haven't used this on the channel before. Um, but it's basically a bundler uh, that's probably a little too basic for it, but it's used especially with like, uh, well, it was created by the, the, the creator of Vue, but it's also used for React and you can use it just for vanilla JavaScript, which is what we're gonna do. Um, so it's like parcel two plus some. And so I thought it'd be fun to play with. All you have to do though, is go to some directory and you say npm init, and then we'll go vite latest, and then you just give it a name. So we'll call this image uh, slider. And then you hit enter and it gives you options. We're just gonna do vanilla. So then it tells you to say CD uh, image slider. We'll do that and then we'll say NPM install and we'll do that. And it's installing everything we need to run Vite. And then we'll say NPM run dev and that's it. It'll actually pop up a local post uh, host here that we can open and this is running live already. It will actually take everything and automatically minify it and do a bunch of crazy stuff to it. Maybe one of these days I'll show you how to use Vite, but in the meantime, you can look it up right now. Let me go ahead and open the sidebar and show you kind of what we've got here. So it's got a package JSON, it's got all its node modules. It's super quick. Um, and right now it's just got everything dumped in here using this module, this JavaScript module here. The style sheet is imported here as well, but we're gonna go ahead and delete that for now and then come over here and delete all this. We will come back and work on that. We'll jump over to the index and this has got nothing but a div here, which we will remove. We wanna leave that script tag in though, obviously. And uh, then we'll come over here and just start working. That's how quick it is to get started. So the first thing we'll do is rename this to something like image slider. And then we're gonna add several things here to the body, but it's actually not too much HTML. So the first thing is we're gonna add a main tag and inside this main tag, we'll have a container. And inside this container, we'll have an H1 that says explore. And then we have one other thing, which is a div with a class of slider. And then I'll come in here and we're gonna have three things in here. We'll have a div of slider progress. And then we'll have a div of slider uh, button container. And then inside here, we're gonna have a couple things. Let's actually come back to that because the last thing we'll have here is a div of slide. And this is where all of our images will go. And eventually we're gonna stack them in here. We're gonna actually insert them with JavaScript as if we're pulling them off a server. Uh, so for now though, uh, I'll go ahead and just say it needs to be our images and then it'll be image uh, one. And uh, we'll come back and play with that in a moment. For right now, we'll just say alt, all right? Now I'm actually going to, like I mentioned, pull these in as if they're coming from a server. So let me go ahead and grab those. Okay, so I just pulled in a folder of images here and uh, there's six images and then a JSON file. And this JSON file just has an array as if you got this back from a server. So that's all we're doing is we're coming in here and grabbing the first image. The last thing we need to do is to add some buttons in here. And I'm adding these as buttons so you can tab to them and they kind of work automatically for like accessibility and stuff. So we'll say we want this to have a class of slider button and also a class of slider button uh, left. And then we'll come in here and let's see, let's also add an ARIA label just to make sure this is as accessible as possible. And we'll say something like move to previous slide. Okay, now inside of here, we're gonna have an icon here and I'm just gonna grab this from feather icons and we'll say arrow and these are free and open source icons. And I think I'm grabbing this arrow left and arrow right. 
And then I'm going to actually just drag these over this way. And we're going to use uh, the code itself directly in here. So arrow left. And let's grab that. And then let's copy this down. And below here, we're going to say right. And this will be the next slide. And then let's open the arrow right. Grab that as well. And by adding them here in the HTML, we can use the current color property that you see here on the stroke and set the color of the button and allow it to shift and change at that SVG button easily without doing like an extra selector or something like that. All right, so I think that's mostly everything. Let's jump back over this way and you'll see we've got Explorer, we've got the arrows, and then we've got this image. We also have the slider progress uh, div, which doesn't do a whole lot right now for us. Okay, let's jump over to the CSS and we're gonna spend the rest of our time here. So I've got this basic clear setup. That's all we'll use for now. That'll just remove the border, the margin, the padding, that kind of stuff. All right, next we're gonna declare some things on the root here, some variables, some CSS custom properties. We'll call this slide progress. This will be the percentage that that slide uh, progress bar moves across the bottom, and we will update that in JavaScript eventually. And we'll also have a slide progress, uh, let's see, progress transition. And we'll turn this on and off depending on if it needs to jump back to the beginning or not. But let's go ahead and add something here. So we'll do a cubic bezier curve, and I'll show you how to grab those here in a little bit. Um, we'll do 0.02. Right now you can just copy these down and then hopefully it'll make sense how I grab those in a moment. All right, everything else lived inside of our main tag. So we'll let's start there. And we want to go ahead and add that um, background here that we've got to it. And I grabbed that from Hero Patterns, which is an SVG, free SVG resource, resource. And I just changed the foreground color and dropped the opacity. I'm gonna copy all that in and paste it, which is a tremendous amount of code here uh, for this SVG. We'll remove the background color though. And then let's jump all the way to the bottom and give ourselves a little space. And then we'll keep working on the main tag. All right, the uh, next thing we need to do is to add a font family. And here we're gonna add enter and uh, the alternate here will be sans serif. And I just grabbed that from this um, Google font here. So I'll type in enter, grab it here. And I think I grabbed 700 and here is the link. And so let's jump back over to our HTML and add that up here in the head. Okay, so we'll save that, we'll save this, we'll open this up and our font has come in. All right, next we need to grab the container. That's what everything on the page lives in inside that main tag. And here we're gonna say display of grid and place items center. Now to see the effect here, we need to go ahead and grab our slide image and we'll say width of 100%. And that way it uh, actually will show us what we're gonna do here. Because what we want is we want a min height of 100 view height on this container. And by placing item center, that justify content center and it also align item center. But we actually want to squish together everything. So we need to do align content as well. So align content center will bring everything to the center. Okay, lastly, let's add some padding up and down. So to rem, we're not gonna add anything side to side. We'll actually limit the scope of this with the slider container here in a moment. Next though, let's grab our H1 and we'll say the font size needs to be three rem and the line height will be 1.4. And then we'll do a margin um, bottom just so it pulls off that picture, just a touch of like 0.5. Yeah, that's fine, uh, M's. Now all of our colors are gonna be based off of this hue of 210, this HSLA hue, 50% on the saturation. We'll do 20% here on the lightness and then it'll be full opacity. So I guess I didn't need the A there, um, but you'll see this is the color we're kind of using on everything. That's actually the color of this SVG just dropped a lot in opacity. We'll say position, position of relative because we're gonna pull this off the page with a Z index and we'll do a Z index of like five, something like that. Basically, we're gonna put a big drop shadow on this image and I don't want it to go over the text. I wanna make sure the text always stays over it. All right, next let's grab the slider. This is the wrapper container over that slide div. And here we wanna say position relative and we're gonna use it position relative because we're gonna position these buttons in that progress bar absolute. And we wanna make sure the slider is kind of the parent that's catching it and it's relative to that. And we're gonna do display grid again and then place uh, item center, which again is shorthand for line items center and justify content center. 
we'll say max uh, width of 800 pixels. That's how we'll clamp the size of this. And you see, as I save it, because we're past 800, it'll show there. When I come all the way down, it looks like it goes all the way to the edge, which is what we want. All right, let's come back here. And then uh, the last thing we need to do is to set, eventually we're gonna set an overflow of hidden. So let's go ahead and do that for now. And then I'm gonna comment it out so I can show you what it's doing in just a moment here. And then we're gonna set a box shadow here. And box set shadows, you can actually do uh, several. And that's what we're gonna do and give it a real blurred effect here. So we'll do 20 pixels right, 20 pixels down, 50 pixels of blur, and then we'll do HSLA. And again, let's go ahead and just copy what we had up above because we're gonna use this same color. Uh, the only difference will be here, we're gonna change this 20% to a 40% and the alpha channel will be at 0.4. And then we actually don't wanna end it yet, we'll just do a comma and copy this down. And then let's pull this down and then this will be 0.2 and this will be uh, 80% and then these will be in the negative direction. So this will be left and this will be up. And if I save it here, you see there's this blur effect. Now, I've got this weird outline down here for the progress bar, this weird outline here, I think, for the uh, buttons. We'll get rid of that in a moment. But now you see why we pulled that H3 kind of off the page a little bit to get it on top of this box shadow. All right, we are getting close. Let's go ahead and grab the slide itself. That's the div that all these images will live in. We're going to set a height of 100, or let's see, 400 pixels, and then we'll say max height a 100 view height. So the images themselves will never get larger than the full height of your screen. So like if you turn uh, a phone sideways, you'll always have the full image in view. Now what we want to do on these images is display flex. Now we'll actually stack them up from right to left. If I pull this over, you may even be able to see them. I think they're off the side there. Oh, you know what? We need to add more. Um, let's come back in here. Let's add this same image four or five times. Okay, so you see they're actually stacked over this way. And this is a little hard to visualize. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's jump back down here. I'm gonna jump over to Figma and show you what I've got here. So here's what we're eventually gonna do. With JavaScript, we're gonna basically translate this over and just move it as uh, somebody moves on the screen. So if they hit over, we'll just jump over to the next one and here, and then eventually we'll jump all the way back to the beginning, um, having removed our transition first. So what we're doing right now though, is just stacking it up this way, and then we'll use JavaScript to actually pull the entire div itself over. And because there's a wrapper around it, that wrapper will stay center and it'll have an overflow hidden. So you won't be able to see everything else. You'll only see whatever is in this black window. We'll come back to this when we work on the JavaScript to kind of visualize what we're gonna do. Uh, but for now, let's jump back over this way and work on the slide image. Because this is a flex child here, we wanna say flex one, which means that the flex grow will be one. It'll grow as much as it can, 0% on shrink, and then we always want it to try to take up 100% of its parent container, which is that slide div. And we've got two more things we need to worry about then, the slider progress and uh, that will be a position of absolute. And then we also have the slider button container. Let's go ahead and do this so we can kind of really see what we're working with. So slider uh, button container. Okay, so those have all been pulled out and now you can see that nice uh, box shadow over here behind, everything else stacked up and eventually this will be cut off when we remove the common on that overflow of hidden. Now for the slider progress, we want the width to be 100% and we want the height to be six pixels. And if I save it, nothing yet really happens. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Um, so let's get rid of that here, jump back up here. Okay, so right now you can't see anything. So let's go ahead and add a background here. And we're gonna do a linear gradient just to kind of spice stuff up a bit. We'll do 90 degrees, which is left to right here. And then we're gonna copy in that same HSLA. Let's grab that here from my clipboard history. And we'll do, let's see, 90% to start with. So this is really white and uh, it'll be 0.2. And then we'll do a comma here, add another one. And this one will be 70%. So a little darker and it'll be 0.1. Let's lock this to the bottom. And then let's say Z index uh, four to kind of pull it up and make sure it's on top of that image. 
And then what we're going to do is use a after pseudo element here. So we'll say slider progress uh, after. And here's where we'll actually have the bar itself. So you always need content, even if there's no content. And then we want this to be position absolute as well. We're going to have a background on this as well. And you'll see I do actually have that div showing there, but it's just real subtle. So then we're going to use this progress bar to actually kind of increase it and show where it's at in that full width. So here we'll change this to 0.7, and we'll change this to 0.6. If I save that, nothing yet happens because we need a width on this. So we'll say our width needs to be our variable of slide progress. Now let's jump all the way up top here because I don't think I actually had anything. Let's add something in so we can see it. Let's say like 35% or something like that. And if I save it, it's still not showing. I think I need a height first. So let's add our height. Let's see, we'll come back here and we need that same height of six pixels. And then let's make sure it starts on the left and let's save and it shows up there. All right, it's jumping me around, sorry about that. Lastly, we'll add our transition and we're gonna use that same variable here, that we, uh, another variable we set up up top, that slider progress transition. And we'll worry about that when we get to the JavaScript right now, uh, not a big deal. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do and we'll adjust the where this bar fades and moves based off of the JavaScript or with JavaScript, we'll update that variable. Slider button container here. We're gonna do some fun stuff here. Or at least I think it's kind of fun, um, even though it's just simple uh, with these buttons. First of all, we want the width to always be 100%. And then next, let's actually come in here and grab the slider uh, button. This is the shared class they both have. And we'll do a border uh, radius of 50%. And then we'll do a position of absolute. And again, we wanna make sure this shows above the pictures. So we'll do a Z index of two padding of like 0.2 rem, and then we'll do top 50% to pull down 50%. And we'll have to adjust this in a moment, but for now that should work. All right, next we'll say display grid and place items center, or not, yeah, items, there we go, center. And that will make sure those SVGs are in the middle of the buttons themselves. And we'll do a cursor a pointer so that when we hover over it, it'll actually show a cursor there. And then we'll say the background needs to be our, let's see, HSLA. Let's just grab this from the clipboard. And we're gonna set this to 0.15 and to 30%, so kind of darker for the background. And that should show just fine there. Because we let, added the SVGs in line, then we can actually take the color, and actually let's copy this down here, and we can change the color just directly here on the button. So we'll change this to be uh, 95% and then we'll do 0.9 for um, the alpha channel. Now this slider um, button SVG, so the SVG inside there, we wanna make sure that we have pointer, pointer events set to none here so that you can't actually click on the SVG because that'll mess up our button uh, event handler. All right, and then let's grab our slider button left. We'll say it needs to be left 0% and then transform, you might notice it, it looks a little low in the image and that's because the very top of these buttons is exactly 50%. So what we need to do is we need to translate it and we'll say 50% that's left just to get it off the edge of the screen there and then negative 50% that's the up and down and that should place it exactly in the center and 50% of its own width away from the left side. And then let's go ahead and we're gonna grab, um, let's, Let's grab the hover first of all. So we'll say if it is uh, either hover uh, or focus. This is selector is kind of handy for doing quick things like that. We're gonna do a little animation here. So let's go ahead and let's write the animation first and then I'll show you um, kind of what we're gonna do with it. So keyframes, we'll call it move left. And then all we're gonna say is at 100%, let's do like 50%. It needs to be left uh, three pixels. And you might remember it starts at zero, so it's just moving three pixels. And then we'll come here and say animation, and we'll set a length of 150 milliseconds, and then we'll do forwards, move uh, left. Okay, and if we save this and come over this way, you see it kind of moves like that. Now, one thing we could do is do infinite, and then if we come here 
it kind of jumps back and forth like crazy. Um, let's change this to like 400 and then let's go ahead and pull up the inspector here and let's get rid of this and let's jump over this way. So I've got this button left transform. Let's see. Let's look at, tell you what, let's go ahead and throw on, let's see the slider button here. Let's do a transition of like 200 milliseconds, uh, all ease, whatever. That's fine. Okay. Cause what I want to do is come in here and grab this. If you click this, you can actually kind of make your own custom things. So I'll grab here, this cubic bezier, and let's just kind of see what this looks like. So instead of, um, let's say move left infinite, I haven't actually added any kind of timing. So let's come in here and now it'll kind of jump back and forth. If we slow this down even more, you might be able to see that a little bit better. You see it kind of hops back and forth like that. So there's some cool stuff you can do with that. Um, let's see, let's um, change it to be a little less. So we'll do like, yeah, 25, about like negative 50.07. This is what I had earlier. So I'm just kind of copying this back over rather than trying to figure out exactly what it might um, be. And then rather than making it go kind of infinitely back and forth, although that's not horrible, uh, what we could do is set it to 100%. And that may, way it only kind of cycles through it once and then it jumps back like that. Uh, or we could do like 20, how about like 10%? See what that does. So it jumps out. So it kind of prompts you to jump over. I kind of like that. Let's leave it like that. All right, let's close all this down. And then let's just do the same thing on the right. So let's see, jump this down here. This now needs to be right. So we'll change all of those to right. I just hit command D and change that. And this will be move right. And this will be move right. And let's see, this will be uh, right of three pixels. Now, the only difference here is we're going to want this X translate to be actually back 50%. And now if I hover over this, it kind of jumps that way. If I hover over here, it jumps this way and tells me, hey, click, and it'll switch it over. We got the progress bar. We've got everything set up. Eventually, we're going to re-enable that overflow hidden, but for now, for the JavaScript, actually helps to see it. So we're gonna leave it in place for next time, but we're gonna call part one done. All right, so thanks so much. Great job following along. Again, there's code in the description. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure to subscribe so you can catch part two, and we'll be back with the JavaScript in no time. All right, thanks so much for watching and happy coding.